Hi there, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with another video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. This is the exam for developers who are building solutions on top of either Dynamics 365 Online or the Power Platform. So we're following on again from the previous video where we looked at the Web API and specifically the discovery URL. In today's video, we're going to go uh, the next stage further and start to look at okay, how can we work with the actual Web API for an organization and how we can get information about the various different properties of our entities, attributes, and all sorts of other associated bits as well. So as you can see on the screen here, we've um, we've queried the discovery URL uh, and we've got our API URL, which is listed down here. So now we can use this to basically build out our request into our instance. Um, so all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna copy and paste that down there. Um, so we've mentioned we're using Postman as well. So in order to basically get everything set up and ready to go, it's recommended that you watch uh, the previous videos where we show you how to authenticate in and how to do all the um, and how to basically get into the discovery URL in the first instance. So with that on there, we've got our API URL on there. We need to just uh, tag on a few additional details. So specifically API uh, data. Uh, we're going to target the latest version of the API. So that'll be 9.1. And first of all, we just what we want to do is we just want to verify that we can actually get in OK and we're seeing the sort of the data we um, anticipate we want to see. So we can do that very simply using what's called a who, who am I request. Um, so if we send that off now, uh, we should get a response back, or maybe not. Uh, what's going on here then? Uh, let's run it again. Uh, let's just generate a new access token just in case. Uh, okay, what's going on here? Let's just check the URL. Uh, let's just grab it from the clipboard instead over here. Let's see if that works instead. Okay, must have been an issue there in terms of my typing then. So effectively then, a who am I request, um, very sim in simple, simple terms, just returns details about the current user. So specifically the ID, their user ID, the ID of the current business unit they exist in, and then also the organization ID as well that they belong to. So it's a very useful way of just being able to confirm, okay, can I get in? Uh, is everything working as expected? And in this case, we can say, yep, thumbs up on that, that's all working. So now if we wanted to, we can actually start to query some of the data in the system. So for example, uh, if I was to use a slightly different URL, if I was to just append accounts at the end of it instead, we get all of the account information that we've got access to based on our security role returning to us. And again, this is all OData driven. So we can you know, add um, various different OData query parameters onto the end of our query. So for example, if we're just interested in, let's say, okay, select, um, uh, territory code, territory code. If that's the only attribute we're interested in, we can just append that on and we see we get just one record back where the territory code is actually a value in there. So that's how you work with individual entities to query data. Um, now we're going to move on and look, okay, well, what if I want to get details about the various entities? So, okay, the types of fields, uh, the properties, relationships, things like that. Um, so what we can use to sort of do that is um, there's various different endpoints exposed by the API. The first of them being entity definitions. And what this is really good at giving you is information about your top level entities, their properties, the attributes that sit underneath each entity, and then finally details about any local option sets. So for example, if I wanted to get the entity definitions for the account entity, um, I would use this URL up here, which I've just copied in. So we want to query the entity definitions endpoint based on the uh, account entity, the logical name. So we need to make sure that we um, use the correct value for that. And then specifically, these are the properties that we want to return. So if I fire off this request now, uh, we should get details back about our account entity. Uh, so we can get, for example, okay, what this display label is, the languages that it supports, uh, the user localized label for what we're dialing in for. And again, if I wanted to, let's say, do a slightly different entity, so for example, if I'm interested more in, a, in the contact entity instead, we can just query that and that'll all work. So there's a whole bunch of different properties that are exposed out specifically by this endpoint. If I was to remove the select parameters like so and just query it, we can see there's a whole heap of different information. Basically, anything that you can configure entity-wise, setting-wise, um, you know, when you go into the interface, um, it's going to be available on here for you to inspect further if you like. So basically, there's a whole heap of information on here, um, you know, which you can use for whatever purposes that you want, really.
So we've got we've seen here we can get details about our entities. We can also get details about the attributes, all of the either specific or all of the attributes that sit underneath uh, our particular entities. So if, if we were to go back to our account entity now, if I was just copy and paste in this instead. So again, we're querying entity definitions. We want to get the entity definitions for the account entity. We want the logical to return the logical name of the account. Uh, but specifically, we want to completely expand out the attributes node. Um, and again, and get all the details, the logical name of all the fields that sit underneath that. So if I send that request off now, uh, we can see, yep, we get the account entity back on there. And then we get specifically the logical name uh, of each of our attributes. And quite useful as well, we also get what the OData type is on here. So again, we can infer on here what our various data types are. Um, and then if we're integrating from an external system, we can make sure we're mapping to the correct um, data types each time when we're calling the web API. And finally, for entity definitions, what we can also do is also inspect details about our local option set values. So again, we're, if I was to just grab this URL on here, update it up here, and we'll explain what it's doing. So again, entity definitions we're querying again based on the account entity. Uh, at this point, we're going to home in on a specific attribute with a specific ID, like so. Uh, and because this is of type pit list attribute, um, we can then um, append this onto the end down here to basically grab the details for that. And specifically, we want to get the logical name and also each of the specific options that sit underneath that. So if I send that request off now, um, we can see based on the metadata ID that we've fed this through, it's the preferred appointment type, uh, preferred appointment day code option set that we are most interested in. Underneath here, we can see we get details, all details about the option set. So the name of it, uh, each of the specific values, the localized labels as well. So if you're in a multi-language deployment, all of the different options, um, really useful detail on here that you can use to then, okay, well, if you're integrated from an external system, you don't necessarily, you know, know, you, you know, you're working with, let's say, display labels. You don't know what the option set integer values are using this, this this type of query, this type of web API um, operation, you can get that information to make sure you're mapping across to the correct location. So that's some of the things you can do with the entity definitions endpoint. Um, moving on now, if you're interested in finding out more about the relationships in the systems, again, there's a separate endpoint that exposes that out. It's called the relationship definitions uh, um, endpoint. Um, and what we can do, if I just copy and paste this on here, um, it works fairly similar to the other ones. Um, you just query relationship definitions like so. And then again, we're using OData on here just to return the schema name and relationship type uh, for each relationship in the system. So at the moment, this is, this is returning every single relationship that has been set up in the system. So typically you might want to just condense this down. It might be you're interested only in, okay, specific relationship types, uh, one to many relationships. And through here, there's a whole bunch of details that you can get out of this. So if I was to just remove the select parameters here now uh, and just query it without any options whatsoever, you'll see the request takes a little bit longer to execute. Um, it's quite a big size request that we get back. Just let um, Postman finish formatting that. But what you can see on here, there's, again, similar to for entity details when you're working in the web interface, a lot of the details that you can configure will be on here. So for example, you can see the various cascade settings uh, for when you reassign or delete records. You can see what attributes are uh, basically included as part of the relationship. Really useful detail on here. So that's how you work with relationships on there. And then finally, it's worth touching upon. So we've seen how we can interrogate the details of local option sets. You've also got this concept of global option sets in uh, Dynamics 365 and the uh, Common Data Service. Uh, now these are not stored at an entity level. Instead, you've got uh, uh, yet another endpoint which you can query to expose these out. So if I was to just grab this over here and just overwrite this like so, um, it's called Global Option Set Definitions. If I just click Send on this like so, we can see again we get details through of every single op global option set set up in the system. And as you can see, quite a lot of detail on here that we have to scroll through potentially to get what we need. Now the thing to note with this particular endpoint is that it doesn't support your OData filter um, filter options. Um, so so all you can so if you are interested in just a specific option set with a specific name, what you would have to do is query based on the metadata ID 
Um, so all the stuff that we've seen so far for everything that we're, uh, we've looked at, you will have a metadata ID that resolves back, always resolves back to a single attribute, entity, option set, whatever it may be. So what we can do in this particular case is that we can query a specific global option set definitions um, using this URL on here. We just basically just put an open bracket, open bracket, the metadata ID, and then a closed bracket. Hit send on that. And then, yeah, as we can see, we get details about our specific component state global option set that we can then interrogate further. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Uh, we've covered quite a few of the different things that we can do to, to scrape off information about our entity metadata from a dynamics from the Dynamics 365 Web API. It's definitely a really useful tool, um, particularly if you're integrated from external systems and you're just not too sure in terms of okay what what you know what am I what am I what do I need to map to you know what are the various different fields and data types that um, I'm going to need to basically map into you can infer a lot of that um, using the web API and potentially also make sure that you're handling situ you know um, you know where things potentially change down the line as well you just always make sure you query the um, Query the entity metadata, and then you can make sure you've always got the correct, you know, logical names, data types, and all that good stuff. So, what it leads me to say at this point is thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. Um, please like, subscribe to the video. Uh, like, subscribe, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, doing these MB400 videos fairly often, also on other subjects as well. Um, so, it'd be great to have you along for the ride. Um, what it leads me to say is have a great day. Cheers.